Um, it's great to be here to talk about our work, um, neural face editing with uh, intrinsic image disentangling. Uh, in past decades, we have seen many impressive works on image-based face, face modeling and editing. For example, the landmark work uh, of uh, Blends and the Vetter with multiple models from 1999. Um, and following up works, this line of work edits face with accurate manipulation uh, of physical factors such as geometry, texture, and the illumination to obtain realistic results. And in recent years, with the rise of deep learning, uh, we have seen promising progress of conducting image manipulation and editing with neural networks that has the great potential of being fast, semantic, and flexible. Our goal is to combine the merits of these two lines of work so that we can conduct neural network-based neural network editing that is flexible, accurate, and physically grounded. And with this in mind, we aspire to design a, and train a neural network that is able to infer the physical factors of a face in, image, uh, namely lighting, geometry, and the reflectance. Uh, however, this is not a trivial task. The main challenge is the availability of data. For real-world face images, uh, it is very hard to obtain ground truth lighting, geometry, or, or reflectance for supervised training. And to address this difficulty in our work, we introduced the encoder-decoder neural network that we construct the input image through a bottleneck lay latent representation. Um, but what is special in, um, in our work is that during reconstruction, we incorporate a rendering procedure. So our network first does inverse rendering, um, decomposes the image into shape, albedo, or reflectance, and the illumination, and then renders the face from these factors, completed within the network. We show that um, if we manipulate the latent representations uh, that we learned by the network, we can conduct a multiple face editing task, such as relighting, uh, and expression editing. So as a starter, in our simplified face rendering pipeline, uh, a face image is composed from its albedo and the shading. And similarly, the shading is derived from lighting and the geometry, in particular, um, uh, the face surface normal of the face. In our work, for simplicity, uh, we assume that the image is a hardened product of albedo and the shading. And at the same time, we use a low-dimensional spherical harmonics representation of lighting and combine it with the surface normals to obtain the shading layer. The good thing is that both of these two functions are differentiable, so we can place them in a neural network and we can train the network uh, using gradient descent methods. Uh, with these rendering modules, the decoding process of our network ends up implant, uh, implementing the face rendering pro uh, pipeline. Um, if we compare our network uh, to a standard autoencoder, we can see that our network provides explicit access to the normals, the albedo, and the lighting. These are the elements that renders the face. Uh, each of them corresponds to a disentangled latent representation in the bottleneck. Uh, another important difference is that the reconstruction is physical in our network. The reconstruction is physically constrained by the rendering functions. As in the case of standard autoencoder, we initially train our network um, in, a, in an unsupervised manner, using faces in the model data sets um, and has only supervision from the reconstruction. The results are interesting but not very surprising. Uh, the network prefers a simple solution. So we generate flat normals, flat shading, and all the illumination effects become part of the albedo image. Even though we got a reasonable reconstruction, we were unable to recover any of the physical uh, factors. That means in our case, unsupervised learning is not enough. So in this paper, we propose a form of weak supervision uh, in the form of specific guiding losses. First, we want to bias the normal map um, estimation towards the shape of the human face. So we introduce a guiding loss to the network for this goal. We use the distance between the normal map that um, estimated by the network and the normal gi normals given uh, by a morphable model as our guiding loss. 
So with this training signal, uh, the network is able to regress to the normals of the morphable model. The pulse and the expressions are correct. However, the recovered shape does not capture the identity of the subject. Moreover, most of the shading information is still contained in the albedo image. So one of the main contributions of our work is uh, to explicitly integrate an intrinsic image decomposition into a generative network. So we use the well-known Aretinex model. According to this, a, um, the shading should be spatially smooth, and the reflectance should be statistically sparse. So we use L2 penalty for the gradient of uh, spatial gradient of the shading, and the L1 penalty for the gradient of the albedo. To see this in the network, um, we have an L2 penalty applied to the shading output and L1 penalty applied to the albedo output as loss functions. In addition, to ease the training process, we uh, actually, such as normal, we provide guidance signals to the lighting coefficients as well. We pre-compute a lighting parameter uh, estimation using the multiple models that we get, and we use cosine similarity as the loss. After the introduction of this intrinsic image uh, uh, guiding losses, the intermediate results of albedo shading at the normals improve uh, significantly. So compared to the previous results where only multiple model normals were used as guiding uh, losses, after we apply the weak supervision signal by intrinsic images, most illumination information has been removed from the albedo image. And remember that the normals were originally constrained to be inside the um, space uh, of multiple model. Now, after this addition uh, of these guiding losses, the estimation of a normal map captures the subject's identity much more closer. And of course, um, to keep pace with the um, current practice, we need to have alpha zero loss. And we add alpha zero loss to the reconstruction. We alternate the training of the alpha zero classifier, uh, which uh, with that of the encoder decoder. And the adversary decides if the, uh, if the reconstruction belongs to the input data set. And that you for uh, in extension of our paper, to we keep further pace with the current practice uh, inspired by Trinatol. We use the feature learned by a face verification network to push the identity of the reconstruction closer to the input image. So we do not train the face verification um, objective. Instead, we use a pre-trained face embedding of network. Once again, we use cosine similarity uh, between the embeddings of the input and the embeddings of the reconstruction as um, loss function. So in the reconstruction results, with such two losses, we can observe two things. First, the faces look more realistic, and uh, the second, the subject's identity is much, more, uh, is much better preserved. So as we only assume the face rendering, uh, face region follows the rendering procedure in the network design, we actually remove the background uh, from the rendering based reconstruction. Uh, to reconstruct the entire image in the network, we add a decoder for the background, a decoder for a mask, and a compositing um, step uh, to reconstruct the final image with the rendered face. Um, and uh, here, as an attention test, uh, we put all of the components together in, uh, in our end-to-end -end network. Um, now let's see what we can do with it. So as an uh, application, we can uh, think of image editing uh, operations as traversing the latent space um, learned by the network. So for example, to make a face smile, we first encode the image in the latent representation by the uh, encoders. And we sample some labeled non-smiling faces and some labeled smiling faces in the latent space. Then we compute a traversal from the non-smiling cluster to the smiling cluster uh, for the input image. Here we have, some, uh, we have used a data-driven traversal algorithm of Gartner et al. At the end, the decoders reconstruct smiling output. Um, as we have um, shown, our network disentangles the image into separate latent uh, space for albedo, normal, and the lighting. Uh, we can traverse each of the manifolds separately or in combinations to uh, define various image editing uh, operations. Our network is rather unique in allowing the user to directly manipulate the illumination of the face. As an example, uh, we can transfer the lighting of the reference of the face to the input face. 
We do that by simply replacing the lighting coefficients of the input image with those of the reference image in the network. And now let's look at some results with, uh, where we actually fix the lighting, uh, but manipulate the normals and textures. For our smiling example, our network generates natural changes of the geometry and texture to achieve smiles of various intensities. So here are some more smiling examples. Um, please note that um, the length of the traversal is proportional to the uh, intensity of the editing change. We can control this with um, single regularization parameter lambda. Another phase editing where, where we actually fix the lighting but uh, manipulate normal and the texture is aging. So as we can traverse the latent space along aging, we can observe that the change of geometry and uh, texture on faces. Here are some additional examples for aging. And another example is facial hair, but it's different from smiling or aging. Growing facial hair only relates to the changes in texture in the image. So for, uh, for, um, for such application, we only traverse on the manifold of albedo. At last, we visually compare the editing results using the standard autoencoder versus our method in the editing task smell. Compared to um, standard autoencoder, the physical constraint reconstruction by rendering leads to a more natural and physically plausible edits. And with adversarial loss and the face orientation loss in the network, the edits results look more realistic and preserves better identity after editing. So in conclusion, we have shown how to incorporate this at the image formation process in the generative neural network. We have introduced constraints on uh, intrinsic images. These constraints can be used for weekly supervised training. And in this way, we do not require expensive ground truth uh, data for shading and reflectance. We can traverse the disentangled manifolds in, uh, of our representations to perform image editing, such as illumination manipulation, uh, expression change, and the modification of various semantic attributes, such as age, facial hair, and glasses, and so on. And then in the future work, we um, want to exp uh, write the shape, uh, explicitly do shape recovery in the network and uh, enable post changes, and also conduct editing in high-resolution images. Thank you.